Hi, this whistle stop focuses on the responsibilities of the ball carrier in relation to the new tackle height. This will help you understand the ball carrier's responsibilities under the new law and help you to apply this within our game. So Smalley, how does the change in law affect the responsibility of the ball carrier? With the change to the law, the ball carrier has a responsibility around how they enter the tackle. Ball carriers must not lower their height significantly before making contact with an opponent in open play. Through the law, we're seeking to avoid what we would describe as latent low dips by the ball carrier, which would put the tackler and the ball carrier's heads in the same airspace. So that brings the topic of legality into the equation. What does that look like in reality? Well, a ball carrier can still brace for contact prior to being tackled or lower their height in the act of scoring or attempting to score a try. Let's take a look at some examples of safe and legal actions of the ball carrier in these videos. In the first clip, we have the white ball carrier bracing for contact. The brown defender is bent at the waist and is able to make contact below the ball, which is below the base of the sternum. Both players' actions are legal, and the white ball carrier is taken to floor. In the next example, we see the blue ball carrier upright, bracing for contact. We see the red defender bent to effect a tackle, and the contact is below the ball, which is below the base of the sternum. The actions of both players are legal, therefore we play on. In this example, we see the green and yellow ball carrier bracing for contact. A defender is bent at the waist. The ball carrier simply hands off the defender. Both players' actions are legal, and as the referee, we would play on. OK, so when we're looking at the law in relation to the responsibilities of the ball carrier in open play, what are the three things that we need to consider? Firstly, a ball carrier must not lower their body height or dip down just prior to making contact with that opponent, as this will put the opponent at risk of having their head being contacted by that of the ball carrier. This is described as late and low. Secondly, the ball carrier must not lower their head below their hips, as this risks encroaching on the headspace of the opponent seeking to tackle them. And finally, the ball carrier will not be at risk of sanction if they are prevented from being upright or have been made to lower their body height based on the action of another player. Smalley, that's really helpful. What would that look like in action? So here are some clips which will illustrate the actions of the ball carrier. In these videos we'll be showing you examples of the ball carrier lowering their body height in order to score a try. In this example, the red and white ball carrier drops to her knees prior to the line, dips and places the ball over the line. The try is correctly awarded and the player is legal. In this example, Black 13 is attempting to dive in to win goal to score a try. The red defender is coming across makes contact with the side of the body. Both players' actions are legal. And sprinting away is Kayla Skidmore. In this clip, the green and red player is attempting to score a try and lowers her body height. The red defender is trying to effect a rear tackle. However, due to the dip of body height, ends up over the base of the sternum. However, this player would not be liable to sanction as the ball carrier is in the act of scoring a try. In this example, we have two tacklers, the green and white team, braced for contact. We have the purple ball carrier, who dips his head late and low, initiating head-to-head -head contact with our tacklers. Therefore, the ball carrier would be liable to sanction.
In this clip, the ball carrier receives the ball in an upright position. The green defender is bent at the waist and braced to tackle. The ball carrier then dips, late and low, initiating the head contact between himself and the defender. Therefore, the ball carrier would be liable to sanction. Thanks, Molly. That's been really helpful to get a better understanding around the responsibilities of the ball carrier. Further resources are available at England Rugby Tacklight Hub, the Referee and Rugby Safe Toolkit on Keep Your Boots On, and visit the World Rugby website. And before we go, we just wanted to share three top tips. Complete the Oddline Head Case Concussion Awareness course. Attend any training sessions provided by your referee societies or one of the coaching tackle clinics in your area. And finally, if you enjoyed the tackle height introduction, the tackler or this whistle stop, then please make sure you continue to watch the rest of the series. Thanks for your time, Smalley. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.